looked, he looked at it and he said, well, you know, he said the possibility that a kinetic scheme represents uh, the true biology of the system varies inversely as the fourth power of the number of constants. And of course, we had six constants. <laughs> so uh, <coughs> any of it, the kinetic scheme now, what, what we know about phototropism, isn't very useful. Uh, it doesn't really tell what's happening. But anyway, we did eat these two papers. Um, now, I had always felt that uh, students, graduate students, and postdocs coming to the lab should have the uh, permission to pick a project, as long as it was in some way related to our interests, my interests, and that we had the facilities to support it. So you can see there are all kinds of different things going on. Tom Scott's working on auction relations and developing PC things. Here's uh, one of the very first uh, phytochrome uh, experiments on a little water fern that Mac went out and got from Lagunita here. Um, Barbara was working on gravitropism. Nancy Nicholson, of all things, working on transportation of photosynthate in, in the area cystis, this huge kill. Uh, Andy McArthur was doing that. And Malcolm, actually, Malcolm Sargent was the person who discovered circadian rhythms in the Rospera. And that, of course, has become a very important model plant now for the people with circadian rhythm business. Well, I have to come back to Malcolm's for just a minute. Uh, we're on top of Brooks here, and their next objective was to be, and we climbed Mallard. Our next objective was going to be to go up this glacier and investigate this thing, which is only known then as Peak Five. Um, well, we did get up there, and we looked at it. It was horrific. Uh, this guy looked also horrific, and was avalanching like fury. So we climbed these two instead, and we came nicely down there and back to camp. Um, okay, that's just an interval. <laughs> uh, intervals. Um, okay, what in 63, 64, I had a wonderful sabbatical at the, uh, at the plant industry station at Delsco, where the, uh, these giants in the phytochrome field were Sterling Hendricks, Warren Butler, and Bill Siegelman. I've already mentioned Sterling. Uh, when I first went there, I uh, had to uh, finish a review for the annual review of plant physiology on phototropism. Guess what? And so Hendricks kept saying, well, when are we going to see you in the lab? So I finally I finished the damn thing and asked him whether he could read it. And I went away and came back again a few days later. And he looked at me with a smile and said, my, you wordy. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, th then he apologized. Later. I said, I didn't mean to hurt your feelings. <laughs> uh, Bill Singleman uh, had, had a big impact. Bill knew how to scale up biochemistry. He was doing, he, he had, uh, first accomplished isolating a red fire red reversible thing <coughs> and we came to know a spider And, well, he believed in doing things large scale. Uh, so you harvested tissue, you had to have garbage cans because you were going to harvest a lot of tissue. You had to make calcium phosphate, a, a crystal form that's called brushite. And so that's what also needed a garbage can. And li later on, when he was growing uh, uh, cyanobacteria, in the culture. You had to, he wanted to get tons of them, so he could get the pigments out and study them. Uh, they were obviously related to phytochrome. So he uh, grew, grew these in great big garbage cans, and then he stirred them with, uh, with fluorescent lights that were inside of the big tube. <laughs> uh, now Warren Butler was a biophysicist. Warren had, uh, had, was in, in World War II, and he had stepped on a mine on a landmine at Anzio, at the Anzio beachhead in Italy, and he lost an arm and a leg. But the one thing he hadn't lost was a sense of humor. He was a brilliant guy. Uh, uh, and I learned a whole bunch of spectrophotometry from him, and how to take the spectrum of, uh, you know, good absorption spectrum of a nice uh, clump of uh, adiolated tissue, or, a, uh, or even a leaf. And we were doing some studies together on protochlorophyll photo phototransformation, and I had to leave to do something. And then I came back in, and the room was dark, except for uh, uh, there was a dim green light over there someplace, and a red light flashing over here, and a white light, uh, a tiny white light. Uh, and I came in, and there was Warren, 
and he had bushy eyebrows. And one of them, he could move them totally independently. And one of them was a full uh, uh, inch higher than the other one. And there was Warren with his arm this way, all the way up to the elbow, in a flask of liquid nitrogen. <laughs> and two, of course, the steam was coming up, and it was Mackie Lilly, it was wonderful. But got this big grin from Warren. <clears throat> But anyhow, Bill and I uh, did publish a paper, uh, and it was a real pot boiler. You know, you take any of the ceilings and you make, make uh, you look at the coating tile tip or the leaf or whatever, and measure how much water comes there on a per unit protein basis. So I <clears throat> went ahead and did this as a way to learn the instrumentation, and Bill said, well, we'll be able to publish that. So I sent it off to Plant Fizz, and they fortunately accepted it. And Unlike those marvelous papers that we had written on Osmunda, uh, this one was cited more than any other paper I had ever read. Uh, at the written, it was a real, as I say, it was a real pot boiler. Uh, anybody could have done that. Uh, but uh, apparently, uh, this struck a core, and people now knew where the phytochrome was and where to go after it. Well, I left uh, Beltsville and went back to Stanford. And then uh, you know, we did a number of things and got several papers, and by this time we had switched over so that I was working and people in the lab were working pretty much on phytochrome and also working to purify it. Bill had gotten out of the business. And we discovered that PR is far more stable than PFR. And also we discovered that green safe lights are much better than red because, of course, red drives this uh, PR to PFR. And then we could just watch it. Uh, gray. It, it changed spectrally and it, it uh, <coughs> lost its photoactivity. We also did have a chance, I had a chance to do the first studies on the intermediates in phytochrome phototransformation in plant tissue. And that was because Dave Fork, who was actually here at Turnetti, uh, had a wonderful way of uh, looking at, that, uh, at, at things that were happening relatively rapidly. So he and I got a, actually got a couple of papers uh, from a study that I did in the basement uh, down in that far corner where his, where his lab was. And that, that was, I knew the people at Carnegie very well because there was wonderful science going on over here. But this is the only chance, chance I really had to come over and work with, uh, work with them. <coughs> well, um, in 1967, uh, the biology department was to move into a new building. The new building had been planned for a year, and I was going to have a wonderful lab down uh, on the first floor, which was uh, which was going to be great. Except that, uh, except that uh, I got an offer to come back to Harvard. And the day they moved into that building was the day we left to go east to go to Harvard. And uh, it, it, I've seen that building, but I always like Paul Ehrlich's quote. He said that it's architecturally defensible only in the military sense of the <laughs> But that's still true. <laughs> so anyhow, uh, we completely shifted to, I gotta wash my tongue, yeah, completely shifted back now uh, to phytochrome, no more blue light stuff. And this is the equipment requirement uh, for phytochrome purification. You have to have lots and lots of absorbent paper, cafeteria trays, cafeteria racks, black hood for each of these racks, lots of garbage cans for crush up and plant tissue, electric hedge triggers, huge blender. And the Cephid, we had a Cephidex column that was this, this tall and about uh, this diameter. Uh, then we had to have other columns, carbon after carbon and buffers, and a number of fraction collectors. And I did forget one important component, that is <laughs> <laughs> So we went to work, and we did find a lot of stuff. The protocol, get up early Monday, um, do centrifugation, fill it uh, high speed to, in the ultra centrifuge, um, you know, concentrate ammonium sulfate, go on to the G50, concentrate again, go on to the brush eye, and so on, uh, uh, through this. And so at the end, we have approximately a, uh, approximately one milligram or two milligrams of stuff. And then we argue vehemently who gets how much for what. 